Now think about Dr. T. She came to Miami University two years ago. She did a presentation about hope. She talked about the notion of drunk, drunken hope versus uh, sober hope, right? right? And with drunken hope, pretty much you like you're inebriated, right? You can't see clearly. And I look at it as like you know this disconscious racism, like Dr. George King talks about, this non-critical habit of mind. Uh, when you buy into these white ideologies, assumptions, when you embrace those things, you you have this notion of this drunken hope. <laughs> tell us that before Brown was physically killed by four bullets to the arm and two bullets to the head, that he was spiritually murdered by the hands of a system that criminalizes and dehumanizes black boys and men. If we were to perform a critical race autopsy on Sandra Bland's body, the report would tell us that this country has an intimate history with the abuse of and maltreatment against black women, sexual harassment, sexual assault, rape, reproductive health issues, and human trafficking, just to name a few. Commercials and TV shows, and it's one of those shows that deals with the private conversations that black families have in their private homes that no one else sees. Those little things you say that you would never say in front of other races of people and it exposes that and it gives that conversation. And this episode was one of the episodes where a, a co-worker, a white friend... Listen to the cops and get in the car. Look what happened to Freddie Gray. Yeah, and what if they make it all the way to the station? Mm -hmm. You remember Sandra Bland? And let's say they do make it to trial. Mm -hmm. You see where that gets us? Don't you get it, Bo? The system is rigged against us. Maybe it is, Dre. But I don't want to feel like my kids are living in a world that is so flawed that they can't have any hope. Going diversity and literacy teacher education, teachers like me, she talks about how forward thinking ideas such as cultural and pedagogy, culture sustained pedagogy, uh, multicultural education, some of these issues they fail to address racism, whiteness, white supremacy, and power. And so Cree, it allows me to address these issues of race, racism, whiteness, white supremacy and power within school and out of school spaces. It also seeks to dismantle the dominant text. Like the text we just talked about, To Kill a Mockingbird, Lord of Flies, you know, Mice and Men, those canonical texts also, you know, the art and show our students in classrooms. Part of it is um, accepting that is so much beauty and being black. And that's the thing that I guess I get emotional about because I've always known that. I've always been proud to be black. Never wanted to be nothing else. Loved everything about it. Just believe in the possibility of black children. In, in, Classrooms in where black students and know their black skin, education, health, spirit, voice, life, and humanity do matter. And if black children do not believe their lives matter, then who will? <laughs> You expect in academia for somebody to tell you the point right in the very beginning. But in a lot of cultures, they don't do that. They, when, they, when they talk to each other, they wait until the end to cut because they're trying. I don't know if everybody who's in science, math, social see, see themselves as actually literacy teachers. Um, so I think pre, I know pre can be taken up in those other disciplines too. Will it look a little differently? Yes, but it can be taken up. That is a perception that those fields are more objective. And so it depends on the paradigm for which you're looking at the discipline. If you come from a critical paradigm, you understand that every discipline, whether it's mathematics, science, social studies, is written by a human, and therefore it's not neutral, it's not objective. In fact, indeed, when you think about facts, it's whose facts are you thinking about? And so this is why it, you know the whole idea that conceptualization will work in across different disciplines. Think about that. And as you are going to continue moving your classes, you're going to take several of the courses that we have. Um, 
that would help dig a little bit deeper into thinking about different paradigms, because that's really what we're talking about, is how we think about the particular field. And do we really know or understand science or how to write and name a formula of a compound are these people, and they have to teach me how to do this. How can we rethink how that, even those tools are used to uh, support our students as they're learning in an environment where we are encouraged to use the, uh, use the technology. And there's not, a, there's not as many diverse resources out there for us to be able to do that. I think you have to be very specific about why you're doing it as a teacher. And for you, like, how does your white female body, right. you know, and in this particular space, why are you doing this? When I was teaching at Northeast, I had a lot of students who challenged a few white teachers about, well, you know, why are you doing this? I think it's okay for us to talk about positionality up front, too, in, in our K-12 classrooms. And I also say, and I think this comes back to Stephanie's question, too, um, so what we're talking about when we're talking about equity pedagogy is we're talking about the how, because it's not either they learn one way or the other, they need to learn both. Mm -hmm. But you build on where they are, and you're going to add on, and I'm just thinking about Gloria Lassen Billings, the three dimensions of um, culturally relevant pedagogy. And the first one is academic achievement, so you've got to make sure they're going to achieve academically, but it's the question of how you're going to do it. And so the methodologies that Dr. Johnson is talking about is talking about ways you can do this because the outcomes are still going to be a, a social political reality in school. And what I'll say expected is... for your students to achieve. The second one is cultural competence, and the third thing is critical consciousness. Mm -hmm. But all of those things are things you really want to make sure you're doing in your classrooms, and you can see that. But really, the bottom line is you still taught the content, but you see it, he was talking about how he taught the content. And